Okay, this is Business 342, Workbook Lecture, page number 73. Consider the following information on the expected uh, performance of companies X and Y. So here's the probability and the return for X and return for Y. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of returns of company X and company Y. So they don't want it for this whole portfolio. They want it for each individual company. And that's because we're going to calculate covariance. So first thing you got to do is figure out the expected returns, which is the probability times the return, the probability times the return, the probability times the return for X. So 0.5 times 30 is 15. 0.3 times 10 is 3. 0.2 times uh, negative 30 is negative 6. Remember, this is the sum. It's a cumulative weighted average. So 15 plus 3 is 18, minus 6 is 12. So that's the expected return for x. And as it works out, the probability times y, probability times y, probability times y, 5, 6, and 1, works out to 12 for y also. So that's the expected return. So they're giving you the probabilities, so you've got to figure out the variance for r and for x. Excuse me, <laughs> for x and for y. So the variance, which is this, the standard deviation squared, equals x minus mu squared. That's that formula times the probability. So 15 minus 12 times the probability of 0.5 plus 3 minus 12 squared times the probability, which is 0.3, and negative 6 minus 12 squared. Remember, you can get, make sure there are negative numbers in there. This is going to square, so it doesn't matter if this turns out to be negative. The number would turn out to be positive times the probability of 0.2. You go through the math. Now, the variance is 93.6. But remember, the variance, you want the standard deviation, which is the square root of that, which is 9.67. So for asset X, 9.67 is the standard deviation. You go through the same calculations on y. Okay, so that is 5 minus 12 times the probability of 0.5. 5 minus 12 squared times the probability of 0.5. 6 minus 12, 6 minus 12 squared times the probability of 0.3. Plus 1 minus 12 squared times the probability of 0.2. You come up with a standard deviation. Remember, they're asking for standard deviations, not variances. 7.71. Okay, so it says calculate the covariance and the correlation coefficient between x and y. Remember the formula for covariance is the covariance of x and y is the return of x minus the expected return of x times the return of y minus the expected return of I, y times that probability for that state. So remember the states were 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0.2. So for x, it was 30 minus uh, 30. You can see up here, 30 minus 12. That was the return minus the expected return. And then that was in this state. And then it's 10 minus 12 for y. That was the return minus the expected return times 0.5, which was the probability up here. Okay, and so if we go down to the next one, 10 minus 12 is 10 minus the expected return at 12 times for y, 20 minus 12, and then times 0.3, which is the probability. You do the same, make sure, now this doesn't square, so this will be a negative number, but this is also a negative number, so a negative times a negative will make it a positive. Okay, so you get uh, what those add, uh, you multiply those together and add them all up. You get 36.0. And again, I did these myself if I made a mistake. You know, if your notes are different that your professor gave you, then his notes are right. Hopefully I figured this right correctly because I don't have any answers to these and I haven't seen the lecture. So these are the formulas for it. If I made a math error somewhere, that's my mistake. Okay, so this is the covariance of X and Y. Okay, so they ask you for the covariance and the correlation coefficient. Well, remember that once you get the covariance, the correlation coefficient, and remember, 
correlation is P, and in this case of XY, which are the two securities, equals the covariance of X and Y over the standard deviation of X times the standard deviation of Y, which you figured out above, above here. Again, if I came up with the wrong answer, that's because I made a mistake someplace. But these are the formulas for these. So 36 over 9.67 times 7.71 comes out to a correlation of 0.483. So next to give you an example, the portfolio has 2 million invested in asset A, 3 million invested in asset B. So a total portfolio of 5 million. That means obviously that the weight is 40% in A, 60% in B, which they show you the calculations for there. Now they've give, they didn't give you a probability, so no, there's no probability in this formula. I mean in these, and but they did give you standard deviation, expected returns, and correlation. Probability. So the formula you're going to use is this formula from page 71 when you're trying to figure out the variance. The expected return is pretty simple. Remember, expected return is just a sum of the weighted average, 0 0.40, which is the weight. Oh, they, yeah, they showed it to you right here, times the expected return of 8. Remember, in these percentages, they use these as whole numbers. But the uh, the weights and the probabilities are ex expressed as decimals. 0.6 is the weight times 12, which is the the return. So your weighted average, weighted some of your weighted averages is 10.4 percent. That's your expected return. And you use that formula from before, and they give you all the information you need here. The standard deviation. Remember the standard deviation. Okay, that equals the uh, weight squared. Remember from the formula, it's the weight squared times the standard deviation squared, in this case of A. And when they, and remember, they've only got two assets too, so that kind of tells you when you've got two assets in the correlation, no probability that it's going to be this formula. Okay, so the weight squared times the standard deviation squared for A plus the weight squared times standard deviation squared, or the variance, whatever you want to call it, for B, plus 2 times the weight of A times the weight of B. Okay, now they didn't give you the covariance in this case, so you won't use the covariance of A and B. You'll use the formula that has the correlation of A and B times the standard deviation. Now this is the standard deviation, not the variance, not the standard deviation squared. The standard deviation of a times the standard deviation of B. Okay, so remember when you when you don't have covariance, you use correlation times the standard deviation of A and B to replace covariance. Okay, you go through and figure that out, and that gives you remember that's giving you the variance. Okay, and usually you want the standard deviation. So they say what and what's the standard deviation of the return? That's the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is 14.6. That's page 73 of your workbook for Business 342.